Hello. 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 Hello, it's Codeman here, and today I'm going to show you how to interact with an FTP server with C Sharp. On my last episode, I showed you how to interact, how to create an FTP server, but now we're going to interact with it with some code. So let's create a new project with Visual Studio. We'll do a console app.net call. And what do we call this? We'll call this FTP client create. Okay, first thing we're going to want to do is right click the project, go manage NuGet packages. And then we'll go browse and we'll type in FTP. We'll see this fluent FTP. Thank you to Robin Rodericks, JP Tolskler, and the rest of them. I'll install that. And you know what? While that's installing, I'm going to go to where we set up that FTP last time, carry them in, FTP. And I'm going to put a folder, let's call it processed. And I'm going to create a new file, just a text document, call this file one. And inside here, we'll put, hello, I am file one. We'll save that. File two, we'll create that. File two, rules, and we'll save that. So we'll go back to Visual Studio now and we'll accept. Now it is installed. So get rid of that. We don't need it. And let's begin. So what we want to do is make this method a sync because the FTP client's going to have some async methods in it. So it's pretty smartly named FTP client. And if you press control full stop, it'll bring up suggestions. And this, its suggestion is to add the using statement fluent FTP. Let's do that. Oh, and we get that special color, which we know means it works. We call it FTP, new FTP client. And what would we got? Host, in, user. Well, we'll do host. So it's localhost. And the new network credentials. Username, remember, we named it test. And the password was also test. Very secure, very cool. Let's have a look at this FTP client highlight over it, press F12. We'll see that it actually implements iDisposable. So given that we're using .NET Core, we can just chuck a using statement in front of it like that. Oh, it's currently in preview. I should update. Okay, I can't be stuffed to update right now, so we'll just do it the old way. Using means that at the end of this, when it finishes doing all its shit, it's gonna dispose of the FTP client. Say goodbye to it. Okay, so what do we want to do first? Well, I want to enumerate all the files. So let's figure out how to do that. FTP dot, what, list? Get listing, async. Let's do that. It's async, so we await it. Var listing equals. Now, vars are useful, but I always like to go control full stop and use the explicit type so I know exactly what I'm working with so I can get used to all the the class names of the library and things like that. So we've got a listing. This will be for everything, including files, directories, and what have you. So let's loop through listing. We could do a for loop, but let's just do for each. So this is gonna loop through everything and we'll just make sure that's FTP list item. I think right now we just wanna enumerate through everything in there and we wanna download all the files in the FTP. So these are all the files. And when we finish downloading the files and reading their contents, we want to move them into processed. So how do we do that? Well, let's make sure we're not going to touch any directories because we can't read the contents of a directory because they hold files that don't have any contents like a file does. If it's not a file, just skip. We don't, we don't care. But if it is a file, oh, Let's download it. So how do we download shit? So let's go ftp.download async. So we could do download file async, which will actually download the file, but I just want to download the content of the file, not to the file system, but just to something in memory, to a stream. So download async. It needs a remote path and an out stream. So let's leave out stream for now. And actually, no, we'll go up. And what we'll do is we'll go using memory stream, stream equals new memory stream. Control full stop, 
using system.io. Very cool. So we've got a memory stream now, and now we have someone to download our file into. And the remote path. Well, we'll go FTP item.name because that will be the remote path. Since it's async, we'll await the method. So everything after this point will be downloaded into the memory stream. But how do we read it? Okay, so we'll, we have to reset the stream, to its position back to zero, and then we have to create a stream reader. Makes sense, right? We'll create a stream reader and we'll put memory stream as its constructor parameter. It requires a stream. Stream file contents equal sr dot read. Oh, we've got an async one in there. Read to n async. And we'll await that. That's pretty cool. So we've got the file contents. We can read it. You know, let's let's make sure if string that is null or empty file contents. Let's throw in a new exception. File is empty. We know that's not going to happen. So, and then once we've read the file into a string, normally we would do something with the file contents, but not today, Satan. So we've, we've read into the stream, we've downloaded the file. Now we want to move the file into a different folder. So pretty easily again, let's go await ftp.move file async. Makes sense. We'll put in the, the uh, ftp item dot name and destination. Well, we want to move it into the processed. Let's do path.combine and we'll combine that with ftp item.name. And that's about it. So let's put a breakpoint here and step through our code. And maybe it'll all work on the first go, who knows? No, we have some errors. Okay, so it, it doesn't want us to have a sync in main, so we'll just do private void do FTP stuff. And then we'll chuck all of this in there. We're making a sync void. This dot do, oh, static a sync void. Because main is a static void, we also have to make this a static. And we'll do do FTP stuff. And we'll just wait for it. So the program uh, will have to return a task from do FTP stuff and we'll just wait. Oh, it doesn't recognize task. So control full stop, get it to bring it in and we'll wait for it to finish. Let's have a crack now. So just for the, the cool factor, we'll have the file there on the left, on the right, I mean. And we'll have Visual Studio here and we'll collapse that. We don't need it. So here we go. We create a new FTP client for localhost. Seems to work. We'll get a listing. See if it works. In the listing, we've got the file and a directory. So we've got the two files as well as the process directory. Awesome. Continue stepping through. We'll check the type. We'll see that it's a file. So we're allowed to go through. We'll create a new memory stream. We'll download the file file1.txt into the memory stream. So you'll see MS has nothing in it. Step over that. And now MS has some shit in it. We'll put the position back to zero so we can read it properly. And we'll create a stream reader. The stream reader will read to end. Hello, I am file1. So let's open file1. Hello, I'm file1. Seems to work. Is string null and empty? No, so no exception. Normally, you would do something with the contents after you downloaded it, but just for now, we're not going to do shit. Then, we're going to move the file. So let's have a look at this path.combine, if you're interested. So we go to the immediate window down the bottom, question mark, control paste, and that's what it converts it into. Processed, backslash, file one. So we'll move over that, and look at that. File one has moved into processed. That's pretty amazing. Step over again, you'll see that the next one is also a file, so it must be file two. Very cool. It'll go through, do the same thing, and it's gone. And then what happens for this third one? Well, it sees that it's a directory, continues out of it, finishes, and the program is done. Thank you for joining me today. 
I hope you enjoyed learning how to consume an FTP site that you created yourself and do some basic shit with it. Catch me next time for something cool and exciting. See you later.